hot on the heels of the Panna, the E3, and Gent Wevelgen, it's Dwarz Door Vlaanderen, the 76th edition of this one-day semi-classic in the Flanders region of Belgium, and the final build-up towards the Ronde van Vlaanderen this coming Sunday. 184 kilometres, the total distance between the start in Rousselara and the finish in Waregem, with 13 climbs and 6 cobbled roads to be dealt with along the way as they crisscross the Flemish Ardennes. It took 30 kilometres before an early break managed to go clear. It consisted of five riders, Nils Pollitt of Bora Hansgrohe, Kell O'Brien of Bike Exchange, Johan Jacobs of Mobistar, Aaron Vilst of Sport Vlander and Balois, and Matthijs Paschkens of Bingo Power Sources. Behind them though, Alps in Phoenix and Mathieu van der Poel had already lit things up with 90 k's remaining. Their acceleration though served as a launch pad for three riders from rival teams. Arkea Samsic's Connor Swift, Lewis Askey from Group Armour and Brent van Moer of Lotto Soudal. Well, as they raced towards the toughest climb of the day, the nerves inevitably led to a crash. Alpes in Fenix's Michael Gogol on the ground amongst many others. The big moment of the race though came on the Berg 10 outer climb, freshly cobbled back in 2018 and with some really tough gradients, it saw Ineos Grenadiers on the offensive with Ben Turner and Tom Pidcock. Catching and passing the group of Van Moor, they drew a group clear that also included Van der Poel, Tish Benoit of Jumbo Visma, Stefan Kung of Group Arma and Victor Campenart of Lotto Soudal. Over the top of that climb, the gaps were small, but with the groups all over the road, it was going to be hard for anybody to close them. On to the next climb of the Canariberg, and it was Golden Greg Van Avermaet attempting to do just that. But over the top of him went Tadej Pogacar. He'd been caught out of position just before his rival sailed up the road earlier. The two-time Tour champion was racing for the first time over the cobbles as a pro rider, but his power looked to be outweighing his inexperience as he closed the gap to 10 seconds. But that was as good as it got. He couldn't get any closer, and a few k's further down the road, he was caught by the main peloton. And soon after that crash, there was a big crash. A touch of wheels saw Oliver Narsen hit the deck hard. That one looked particularly painful. On to the Knochterberg, and it was Jan Trapnik on the move for Bahrain Victorious, closely followed by Valentin Madois of Group Armour. Over the top of that particular climb, Crow Anderson, Pugaccia, Van Avermaet and Kokar had joined them, and there was just a matter of a 20-second gap to close to the group in front. That had risen to 24 as the early breakaway was caught, and the increase in pace spelt the end of the time out front for Vivilst. With Benoit continuing to accelerate out front, the next rider to get himself into trouble was Jacobs, also having spent the whole day in the breakaway. Into the closing 30Ks and Pogacar still hadn't given up, accelerating over the dawn section of cobbles, but by this point the gap to the front had expanded to over 40 seconds. You've got to admire him though, he's won many of the biggest races in the world, but he never, ever gives up. The closing 10Ks were nail-biting. If you can watch them on demand over on GCN+, I thoroughly recommend you do so. Stefan Kuhn gave it a nudge on the 13th and final climb of the day, but it was Victor Campenart on the descent that got the first gap, reportedly using a 60-tooth front chain ring. He was gritting his teeth so hard, in fact, that he chipped one of them in the process. Benoit and Pidcock would later bridge across, then Vanderpool, and we were back to a group of eight. Campenart simply would not give up though, going again inside 4Ks to go with only Benoit going after him. They too were caught though, but once again we would see the Belgian rider from Jumbo Visma on the attack again. Pidcock was also in attendance, but at this point Benoit did get a gap. Van der Poel was forced to chase behind him and the other riders in the group all looked at each other. So two riders out front with one and a half k's remaining and it would be those two who came into the closing finishing straights together to fight it out for the win. Van der Poel pushing it almost too hard on the final right hand hurt turn. He went with 250 metres still remaining. Benoit did the best that he possibly could but he was no match for the Dutchman in the final sprint to the line. Win number two then for Mathieu van der Poel in just seven days of road racing this season. He's back and he's going to be a force to be reckoned with this coming Sunday. Tom Pidcock took third place on the podium, just ahead of Victor Campenarts, who took fourth. Well, he took the win, but it clearly took a lot out of him. Mathieu van der Poel taking his first ever World Tour win here three years ago in 2019, and he's added another win to his list today.
Well, here's the top 10 of the day. Van der Poel taking it ahead of Benoit, Pidcock, Campenarts, Pollitt. Stefan Kuhn in sixth. Kellen O'Brien with a brilliant ride in seventh. Turner, Tratnik and Pogacar rounding out the top 10. And this is quite the final podium, isn't it? All three of these rides will likely play a key role at the Tour de Flanders later on this week. Make sure that you join us on GCN Plus for live coverage from Kilometre Zero and indeed for the breakaway show before and after the race. I will see you bright and early on Sunday.